Hi guys and welcome to a slightly different video. What actually happened was that I've got the, as you can see behind me, the Peugeot E208. Follow that on uh, hashtag BCG Peugeot E208. And uh, I was out filming a driver part of the review. On the way back, I stopped to charge it because the car goes back tomorrow and I thought it'd be good courtesy to charge it out for them. Whilst I was there, it was going to take about an hour, so I was frankly quite bored. So I decided to go online and I went live on Instagram. And when I went live on Instagram, I was joined by my good friend Pata Sridvasan, all the way from India. And we had a right old banter on Instagram Live. Had a lot of fun actually, uh, messing around with the filters and stuff as well. But also got to some serious stuff about what it's like to live with and run uh, an EV, the sort of costs involved, the charging times, all of this sort of stuff. We did discuss some of that, but mostly we just had a bit of a laugh. And uh, you know what? I thought I'd rip it off the Instagram Live and stick it up on here because I thought you might enjoy it. And if you did, then let me know in the comments below. And maybe every time I have to stop and charge an EV, I'll do the same thing. And perhaps next time you could join me. Make sure you're subscribing to my Instagram in order to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to head back inside now because since I did that, it's now got a lot colder, a lot windier and it's raining. So I'm shivering. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you again soon in the next one. Playing with Instagram Live because I am waiting for my, hey, look at this. I've got all this kind of weird crown. Hello, pa hello Partha, how you doing? You all right, mate? How's India? Hello, Takima, how you doing? You all right? So, uh, so what's happening is that I'm sitting here waiting for um, Persia EV to charge up. Um, I've been here a while, so I was on Facebook Live earlier on my, on my personal Facebook, and now I'm here on Instagram Live. If you have any questions about driving and running an EV, which I've been doing for the last week, uh, then let me know. Um, and I can tell you all about it because I've been doing it. Uh, that's great. What, which F1, Josefa, which F1 drivers uh, is asking, which F1 drivers do you support? Uh, Damon Hill. <laughs> So are we your entertainment? Yeah, man, entertain me. Enter. Are you not entertained? Am I not entertained? I need to be entertained. I'm bored, guys. I'm bored. I'm waiting for the. I'm waiting for this car to charge up. So, um, yeah, you need to entertain me. Uh, F1 drivers. Yeah, I'm not a huge F1 fan anymore, to be honest. Uh, as much as I used to be. And hello to uh, Abdul Mutin Arshad. I'm not. Uh, Go, uh, okay. How are you doing? I need to change my filter. <laughs> Why have I done this with the filter? I just don't need to do this with the Oh my God. This is so psychedelic. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Bye -bye. I'm all right. <laughs> hey. I love your filter. <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I didn't even know there were all these filters on here. Oh, Look at Jesus. that. I'm not, I'm not in scope now. This is crazy. How oh, mad is this? Oh, I've got stuff coming out of my face now. Look, this is absolutely bonkers. So, I didn't know you could do right, that. It's been a while since I've gone live on these things. So, I didn't know you could do this because uh, I was just on... Hello to Ben Miller, to Azaruddin, all these people joining. It's now nice it's, to have you guys. Now uh, it's raining pollen in your screen. What the hell? I don't know, man. I, I'm just going through these... Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> stick your tongue out, stick your tongue out. Uh, I don't even know what's oh, wait, it, supposed to be It's there. not supposed to, uh, it's supposed to, yeah, anyway. So I had a few right. questions, actually, that's the reason I requested. All right, good, 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 some serious stuff. Let's do some serious stuff. Look, I'm cool, man. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey. need a chain and a cigar, right? So then we can do that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> cool, I'm cool, I'm cool oh. here rocking it in my EV. Check it out. So oh, you've been on an EV sprint, haven't you? You've been on an EV sprint, haven't you? Over the last well, few months. Well, I did say, months. one of the requests I got through social media last year was to review more EVs. So I thought, all right, you know. And I think that they're becoming more relevant, um, you know, mm -hmm. because especially here in the UK where we're supposed to be switching. Look at that, there's so many of me. <laughs> you can never get an and they all fit car, guys. You can never get an and, and they all fit in, and here's the thing, they all fit in that small EV. They're all in here. This is a really spacious <laughs> Peugeot 208, isn't it? Look at that. Look at the capacity <laughs> in it. So, uh, so, anyway, so we're heading towards the 2030 deadline. <laughs> How weird is that? How me and my buddies here, me and my buddies, these are the guys I trust. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so we're heading towards the 2030 deadline where, oh, I've gone black and white. Oh, no, weird. So, and and we, we're all going to have electric cars, you see. That's the point, isn't it? So I suppose we better start looking at them and testing the, the real world. Look at how long I've got. I've got sparkles coming out of my nostrils. This is crazy, man. <laughs> Look at this, man. <laughs> I got sparkly stuff. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my dear uh, lord. Uh, uh, ben Miller's asking, what car are you in? What car? Hey Ben, uh, what car am I in? I'm in a Peugeot E208. So a few months ago, I reviewed the regular 208. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. The interior is like a mini Lamborghini. I mean, honestly, they, you know, everybody no. used to mock Peugeot and French car interiors. Take another look because they're fabulous now. This one's really good. I really like it. So I thought I'd better try the hello to just uh, the cause biker and to Mita Ray. And so I thought I'd better try the electric version. Hi to Min Suresh. Uh, and, you know, I've been driving it around town for about a week. It's going back tomorrow. So hence I'm charging it up because uh, they've requested that it be charged for them to take it back. I'm up so you have to send it back with a full tank? Yeah, but basically, in this case, you know, well, the trouble is, you know, because the cars have to go back to Coventry, and Coventry is about an hour and a half drive from where I am. You know, it's about 90 miles. So, you know, they won't make it. If I give them a car with 90 mile range, they won't make it. You know, it won't happen. So, so why don't you go there, fill it up, give it, and give it back, and then come back walking or something like that? From Coventry? <laughs> I've, got, I've got dark glasses on now. How did that happen? Uh -huh. That's so weird. And, and, and it's all dark. It's not just the fact that you're wearing dark glasses. Even the screen's gone dark. Why is the screen gone dark? You're nuts. Oh, look at this. There you go. It's black and white. I've got oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, so I'm charging it up. So I thought, you know what? I'm bored now. So I thought, let me go live. But anyway, so this is reporting fun. back on the EV experience. So when the mm. car arrived, it arrived with, whoa, check it out, dude. What am I having? I'm See, I told you it gives you a black layer on top as well. <laughs> it's really weird, isn't it? So uh, when the car arrived, it had 91 miles on it, right? So I thought, you know, so immediately. So what's the range on the car? <laughs> There's two of me. That's me and my twin. <laughs> This brown car Hi, guy two one, of you. and brown car guy two. Oh, hang on. Here he is. Brown car guy two. That's so weird. I wonder if I'm the same on both sides. Am I the same? There you go. Not disconcerting at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. I got a wider face now. Anyway. So, uh, right, so what's, what's the range on the car? <laughs> so the range is the range. The official range is two, two, two seventeen, two hundred and seventeen miles. Um, hello to people joining us. Uh, what's that? Dark light, dark light, Andy. Oh my goodness, sounds like he's a Star Wars. So, the dark light, Andy miles. is one of my students. Face palm. It only arrived with ninety-one miles. Face palm. Face palm moment. Uh, so I immediately went and charged it. And you can see that I posted that earlier on, on, the, on this page. Uh, just search for hashtag BCG Peugeot E28. And I got it up to 145. Hello to Voyager uh, Ranjit. Oh, your buddy's joining. Fantastic. Hi, hi, nice to see you guys. Hey, all of you joining, make sure you follow me as well, yeah? So um, <laughs> got to get the plug in, yeah? So, um, I got, so I immediately went and charged it because I thought 91 miles, I just got range anxiety straight away, even though like no. 91 is plenty, right? So I charged that at the no, time. No, you think, but to... you mentioned that it's about 90, 90 miles to Coventry, right? One and a half to, uh, hours? Yeah, so yeah. How, you're, how you're far is that? Right. Yeah, 90 miles. Yeah, yeah. It's about one and a half hour, 90 miles. So they delivered the car to me. It had 90 mile range. So I'm guessing he must have started with a full charge. And then he was careful to use it up and uh, used up about half the charge when he got to my place. So I got 91. I spent another half an hour. I charged up to 145. Okay. Over the week... I have been uh, driving it mostly around town. Until today, I've driven it mostly on short journeys around town. I did about 45 miles. So you would assume that I'm, I'm down to less than 100 because obviously, in actual fact, you end up using more than, than what it says, right? So in fact, because I've been using the B mode, the brake regeneration mode, and I've been keeping it in normal, look at this, I'm inside, like, I'm, I'm inside a box. This is great. I notice how the yeah. lines are on the other side. That's so clever. That's so clever. So <laughs> I'm easily distracted. Uh, so I got it up to, uh, I like this. This is weird. Whoa. Okay, now this you're the flash. So fast. This Peugeot is so fast. Actually, it is. And you know what? It actually <laughs> I, is. I was, 
So I was just going to ask you about that. I mean, is the Peugeot as fast as your uh, illusions right now? It, it, totally. This is how I feel when I put it into sports mode. The only trouble is that in sports mode, hey, Teos, how you doing? The only trouble is that in sports mode, you, use, you start to use up the juice. You start to use up the mileage very quickly. So, um, so it does, obviously mode, it would affect range. So in normal mode, yeah. So what I was finding, a driver around town in normal, and in fact, the I was actually gaining miles. It's not autumn. What's the matter with you, Instagram? Why are the leaves falling down? It's not autumn. I'm looking forward to the summer. And they're giving me autumn all of a sudden. Uh, I'm going to go back to the piggy face. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think those are cat ears, but okay. I don't know what it is. What is it? Is it a cat? Is it a bear? Yeah. Well, no, that's bear. a cat. That's a cat. a cat. That's the yeah. weirdest looking cat in the history of cats. <laughs> That's weird they're looking in the movie Cats. The brown cat guy. Disturbing. Hello to Talha, Tarek, how you doing? So I got, yeah, so I actually... You're the brown cat guy. The, I'm the brown cat guy. Oh, that's so weird. I saw a movie last <laughs> night, don't mention cats. It was very cr scary. It was Pet Cemetery. Did you see, have you seen Pet Cemetery? You know? I no, I, I don't. I, 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 I just like horror movies. <laughs> yeah, me too. It was just on and I was bored, like a bit like now, you know? So I just started watching it, you know? And I think it's a Stephen King thing, right? And the guy buries his dead mm. cat in this special cemetery, and the cat, and the cat comes, comes back. back. Cat come back yeah, to life, yeah, yeah. except the cat. Yeah. Except the cat is changed. It's an evil mm. cat now. So it's really bizarre. So <laughs> anyway, so coming back to the topic at hand, uh, this is great fun, man. How are you doing, Parthe? So good to catch up with you. How's things in India, by the way? You're right. Sc scary as hell. Scary oh, man, as hell. I tell you. I've been watching the news for Just reading the news is giving me anxiety. Oh. Give it, reading the news is giving me anxiety to even step out. But yeah, I, and I love being out on the road. I love traveling. Yeah, no, I noticed. I noticed you've been doing quite a lot of touring and stuff lately. Yeah. No, man. Yeah, it's, so been, it's, oh, it's been heartbreaking. Talha Tariq says, how are you? I'm good, man. Thank you for asking. Hope you're all well. Hope everybody watching is doing well and keeping safe and well wherever you are. But yeah, really, yeah. my heart After Everybody who's watching, right follow Brown Car Guy. Go look for him on... On YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and you did I say YouTube and Instagram? If you wait, you're already on Instagram. Everywhere, so right everywhere, and follow everywhere. You know, Spotify, TikTok, the work, everywhere. You know. And, the reason uh, I'm chatting with Shazad is because I wanted to get his views on the the last few EVs that he's spoken about and what has been his experience. How ready uh, is the network and the infrastructure for using something like an EV? Uh, and why does he have hearts coming out of his eyes? Give me the love. Give me the love. I'm feeling the love. That's what's happening. I feel the love, man. Give me the love. So, so uh, yeah, it's a real world experience when it comes to EVs. Cause they are cool. What else would they be with shades like this, man? They are cool. No, uh, cool. you know, you know that I'm an EV skeptic. So you know me. You know I'm an EV yeah. skeptic. So I've I've struggled yeah. with this a little bit. To be fair. You know, I've really struggled with the whole concept of EVs. And I, I suppose um, it's kind of therapeutic for me as well to be reviewing more of them this year because I have to get to know them. I have to get to learn them. And it's been quite a learning process, man. You know, like you have to start to learn about the type of charges that are fitted to the cars because they're all different. And I don't just mean the connector, but I mean the actual charger itself. So the rate of charging is actually different from car to car. And then you have to understand, oh. is it compatible with the charger? How quickly is it going to charge? You know, because you could have a 7 kilowatt charger or a 50 kilowatt charger. This car is actually capable of 100 kilowatt charging, except that you can't oh. get 100 kilowatt charging anywhere. So it's capable of oh. it, but it's not available. You know, so for the charger right. I'm using... So the infrastructure doesn't do that. <clears throat> yeah, so right now I'm using a Genie Point charger, 50 kilowatt charger. Um, okay. And so, it, you know, so it's doing all right, you know. But so, and then you have to understand the charges. Like twice, I've had to be on the helplines with these uh, companies trying to figure out why the cars that I had plugged in weren't charging. And eventually, I figured out that I was using the wrong cable. But it's not obvious, you know, because there's three different types of connectors that you have to use. You know, so again, you have to know so, which connector it is. So, what companies are actually? I mean, when you took the car from Peugeot at the, at the start, did they actually tell you what you need to look out for when you're charging the uh, car at what point and stuff? No, the the conversation is like, "Is your car, mate? Good luck." <laughs> and that's it's it. Got so 90, really it's got ninety miles on it. No, no. So, no. To be honest, it's been a learning curve. It's been a learning process, you know. And to be honest, like <laughs> technically, technically, apart from the Tesla chargers, which obviously are exclusive to Tesla, you should be able to charge your car at any charging point. 
but it varies because all of these genie point and I use I use Instawalt on the motorway. They're all different, and they all have different systems. So this one you have to sign up to the app, right? Instawalt. So you're in the UK. Uh, so you're in the UK, and they have uh, different type of uh, charging stations. And what what's that like? What's the network like? Terrible. Terrible. So, so near my house, because I'm near my home at the moment, there's, there's, one, mm. there's one near the petrol station down the end of my road, which is usually either broken or occupied, or somebody's just parked there and left it. You know what I mean? That's the problem, right? So I come really? here to Morrison's, which, yeah, so I come here to Morrison's, which is a little bit further from my home, but not too far. And they've got, about, they've got two of these chargers here. So I can use them here. They've got two chargers, but four parking spaces. So you can, you know, you can pull the cables and you can do that. At the moment, I'm the only one here charging, which is amazing, right? Since we're all supposed to be driving EVs, but that's it. And um, it, it, I've had to sign up to the app. I use the app. So I have to put a credit into the app. So I put a 10 pound credit into the app and then it deducts from that. And then it automatically charges another 10 pound when it needs to top up. So that's how that works. Um, now, I like the Instavolt one, which I tried the other day. Because that's on the motorway, though. That's not here. And for that one, you basically, you plug it in. Like, Whoa, I'm in the disco, man. I should turn the music on. Uh, <laughs> for that one. But won't that, eat, won't that eat into your power if you switch on the... Uh, the uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Stereo. Uh, is the car on? Because the car is off. There you go. I've got the stereo on. I've got the AC on. Now I don't know if it's still charging or not. It must be charging. Yeah, it's showing plugged in. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go, here it comes, here it comes. It's the final, it's the final. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get that in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the timing was impeccable, <laughs> isn't it? It's got to be because it's got to be the final countdown for this charge, which I can't now. Now I can't turn the car off. Okay, here we go. So I hope it's still charging. Yeah, I think it's still, still charging. charging. Yeah, it's still charging. So, uh, awesome. so I'm up to eighty-eight percent. I need to get it into the nineties, then I'm happy. Then I can give it back in ninety-something percent. That's not too bad. So, got it. Um, uh, go I had a question. Uh, so the Honda that you were using before, the Honda EV, which is one of the cars that I actually loved, except for the fact that. Yeah. I, I actually found that the, when you were talking about the entire full video display and the rear views and everything with camera and not actual mirrors, I did find that that was something that kind of uh, bothered me, even though I wasn't actually in the car, but it's something that kind of stood out to me. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you, Compared to something like the Honda, which is like one of the probably the better EVs that you've tested on your channel so far, how does this compare, the Peugeot? Well, the thing is, you say it's one of the better EVs. It's one of the better EVs in that it's an adorable little thing. You cannot not fall in love with it. It's just gorgeous. It's wonderful. It's small. It's got character. It's got oodles of character. It's like one of my mates said when he got in the car. He said, it just makes you happy. And it does. It just makes you happy. You know, it's just a really, it's a, it's a car that brings a smile to your face straight away. And inside that huge dashboard and stuff like that, that's just incredible. I mean, you have an aquarium in the car. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You can plug your you can plug that your huge, Xbox that huge into it and play games. Yeah, yeah, yeah huge exactly. display. So, but it's got those cameras. It's got those uh, cameras instead of mirrors, which I struggle with, to be honest. I, I just I find the depth perception very difficult with those. But the biggest downfall of that car is its range, because the range is just too short. I mean, essentially, you've got barely, barely 80, 90 miles range. That's it on that car, Got it. you know, and you deplete it very quickly if you use the AC and stuff. Like in this Peugeot, I don't know what they've done, but they've figured out some way of not draining so much power once you turn the heating and stuff on. So if you turn the heating and AC on normally in an EV, it drains a lot of power. So I had people, say, yeah. for example, when I put up the Honda E review, I had people saying that what they do is they don't use the climate control at all in the EV. But when it's cold, they just turn the heated seats on. And I'm like, well, heated seats are nice, but after well, after you've roasted your bum for an hour, what else do you do? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit, you know, the hands are cold, you know, it's not good. So that's no way to live. Um, so I'm not too sure about that. So the EV, the, prop, the, e, the Honda E, the problem I have with that one, as adorable and as lovely and as delightful as it is, it doesn't make sense unless you live in the city and you do very short mileage and you can just keep it plugged in at home. In that case, yes. Plus, 
You're going to pay. So it's your second car. $30,000. It'll be the second car, not the primary car. It would be a second car, very much so, yeah. But if you're rich, because 30,000 pounds for a small car like that, it's, that's a lot of money. We're talking, if I can try and convert it into dirhams, because that's a language that you and I would both uh, understand. We're talking about uh, 180,000 dirhams. Yeah. I'm sorry, do yeah. you want to run that past me again? Yeah, uh, but, but around approximately 180,000 dirhams. For a wow. Monday. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, so and, that, so to, again, and so, what about something like the E208? So the E2, this, this is also, this is in the 27,000 pound range. This is 27,000 pounds. But, but... This is more spacious. It's more practical. I mean, the Honda E is not very spacious. Let's be honest. It's not got a lot of room. You know, it's you know, it's very. It's a two plus two occasional. You know, with some luggage space. <clears throat> if you probably shopping space more than luggage space, I should say. This is a proper full. There's no compromise in space between this one and the petrol version. Because the way they put the batteries in, they they always knew they were going to put batteries in the car. So they basically, they, they thought, okay, we're going to just put them under the front seats where I'm sitting here. They removed the petrol tank, they put them there, and they, where the exhaust is. So we, there's like a hitch pattern of batteries. But the platform was always designed to accommodate the batteries. So, uh, so there's no compromise on interior space. So in that sense, this car is quite practical. It drives like a normal car. It feels like a normal car. The space is the same. You don't compromise at all in any of that. And you've got two. And it could literally be the... Yeah, and it could literally be the only car in the house. Yeah, so this one could be the only car in the house. Again, if you're going to do a lot of motorway journeys, I would still hesitate to recommend an EV. But if most of your commuting or mileage is around town or in the city, then I would like, yeah, okay. And, uh, and here's the big thing. Like, I live in an apartment. I can't run a cable down to the car and charge it, right? But if you live in a house, and over here, if you live in a house, you can have a home charger installed, which is a quicker charger. It's a seven kilowatt, so it'll still take about seven hours to charge. Uh, mm. But if you plug the car into your socket, into your plug socket at home, the normal plug mm. socket, it's a 14, 15, 16 hour charge, depending on the car, right? So even wow. overnight, it wouldn't be charged. But if you get a home no. charger, a seven kilowatt home charger, which you can install in your home, I think it's about 200 to 300 pounds, uh, then you can do it in seven hours. So you could plug in overnight, in the morning, your car is fully charged, ready to go, no problem. So most people with uh, EVs and a house where they can park it on the drive, that's what they would do, it would make sense. If you live in an apartment, you're screwed. <laughs> there's not, there's so, really not a so lot you can do. So this actually brings us back. Remember we had this conversation on our first podcast, the one that I recorded for the East. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was it awesome. kind of ties into that as well, right? It, it... <laughs> I'm going to double down on what I'm saying. If you don't believe me, you've got to believe him. And that's just as simple as that, right? <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> yeah baby so um so it, it kind of brings us back to that conversation right where yeah, absolutely that there's zero but, uh but awareness say, there's learned, no training i've learned a lot more since we had that conversation you know uh, you know when i when i when i when we were having that conversation i had driven evs but i'd driven evs on events so, you know, like you go on a press event and the manufacturer takes care of everything. You don't have to live with the car, right? So, but since then, I've lived with EVs. So I've spent weeks with them now. And I've got a couple more lined up for in a, in a, in a few weeks, actually. So stay tuned. One of them, I think uh, everybody will find extremely fascinating. I'm really looking forward to it. It's one of the major new EVs uh, and, and, it, and, a, and with a very, let's say, a very evocative name. So let's see who, if anybody can guess which EV that's going to be. And that's coming up soon. And I'm looking forward to trying that. You say, oh, yeah, you say, I think you've got it, haven't you? And uh, so that'll be quite interesting. And I've got another one as well that's lined up. So uh, I'm going to be doing more of them this year. And, and I did one with the MGZS where I did a longer journey. So I drove it uh, to Solihull, which is just over 100 miles away. So it was about 200 mile journey. And the range in the car was 160 miles. So, uh-oh, straight away, you're like, okay, this is going to be a problem. So the whole experience of that, I blogged in a video that's on my YouTube channel. And that's a real world experience of what it felt like nice. to, to, for the first time to do a long journey on your own in an EV. Um, and yeah, it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't sell me on EVs. I'll tell you that much. Driving them around town and driving them on uh, longer journeys on motorway journeys, I think are two different things, I feel. 
but are, you're still not a convert you you're still not on the ev side um i i i've moved a bit i've moved your hesitation a bit. I'm not I'm not quite I'm not quite yeah I'm not quite on that side yet let's be honest you know like take for example this car now this Peugeot it's got 136 brake horsepower equivalent right um if you put on sports mode now the trouble is that you lose in step changes between sport woah in the step changes between sport and normal and eco woah you lose about 30 brake horsepower so it's just 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 trippy man that's really trippy so you lose about 30 brake horsepower each time so really you feel like driving it in sports mode and i've driven the petrol one and i used drove it in sports mode the whole time because and of course i was using more petrol but you're like yeah if i run out of petrol i just put more in so what you know big deal in this car you run out of charge you're screwed unless you're near a charger right Now so the temptation is to drive it in sports because you get the full 136 horsepower which is actually the most that Peugeot 28 has in the whole range so this is like the GTI or Peugeot 208s and you feel it <laughs> the the performance is relentless you put your foot down there's no gear changes either so you put your foot down you just yeah. like no oh, top gun i feel the need for speed it's one single like, gear it's a lot of speed yeah it's a lot of it's linear and it's relentless you know and it's intoxicating Correct. i got to admit it's intoxicating you know because there's no break in it at all it's just constant performance you know um mm-hmm. but if you do that you see your your range drops off straight away you you start to lose the range straight away so that's a big problem um so, so, so that's so, a problem because i mean you want to do that on straight ways and highways but then if you have range anxiety you're obviously not going to do that on straight ways and highways and you can't do that within the city without the fear of knocking somebody over Yeah, you break the speed so limit straight away. So the problem is that, like, so, so, like I said, so for the whole week, I drove it around town, and I pretty much actually did not only the mileage that it said, but I actually gained mileage because I was using it in in regen mode, and I gained probably about four, five, maybe even up to ten, depending on what mode you're in, miles. So it actually does quite well. Today, I took it for a longer run because I wanted to film the drive segment for my review that I'm doing on this car, and of course, I found some nice roads and I opened it up and stuff like that. I lost twenty miles straight away. Like straight away, twenty miles. The range is like, so boom, you know. So if you're so it's like anybody's diet. Sticks, yeah, no. And if so, if you're out in the sticks somewhere, if you're far away and you do that, and you lose twenty miles, you're like, damn, where's the next EV charger? Where's the nearest EV charger? I could be stranded out here in the middle of Wales and be eaten by sheep. It would be terrible way for the brown car guy to go. The sheep in Wales don't like brown people. And it's like, this is gonna get me. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. No you don't. No you do not. <laughs> so, so it's kind of freaky. But yeah, so that's so that's my only dilemma. That I, I yeah, it, it is a big dilemma. You go out of town to enjoy the performance, but if you do that, then you run out of range. In town, you don't drive it like that. In town, what you're doing is you're driving it and you're keeping an eye on the range and you go and you're thinking, can I recoup? Can I can I gain back another mile? Can I gain back another two miles? Oh good, it's gone up again. That's what you're doing the whole time. That's what you're doing the whole time. So But range anxiety is definitely real in every EV unless you really yeah. have either a very good network. But even with the network, I mean, the time it takes to charge up a car versus having to drop in on a petrol station and fill up there, obviously the the benefits outweigh that. Well, I've, I mean, I've, I've been I've been I've been sitting here for about nearly an hour now, okay, and I've got it up, and I can, and I when I got here, I think I had about fifty percent charge, okay. It's now on ninety two percent charge. So that's what I've gained in an hour, you know. And uh but you lost I'm, the hour. Yeah, but I've lost the hour. Well, I've never lost it because I've had fun talking to you. But but normally I'd be sitting here doing nothing, you know. So in fact, that's what I'm going to do. Right, then. This is this is what I'm going to do. Review more. Every, <laughs> every time I'm charging <laughs> here, I'm just going to go live because that's a lot of fun. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so that that's that's the problem. You do, you know, whereas in the petrol station, I would have been in and out in 5 minutes. I would have filled it up and gone, mm. you know. That's the only thing. But oh, this was this was fun. Yeah, this was good, man. Thanks for joining Thank me. Thank you today. very this much. This was awesome. <laughs> yeah, very impromptu, but a lot of fun. Thank you. I, I right, I'm man. glad Take, I was able yeah, to talk to you. Stay safe, man. Stay safe. Well, all the best to you, you too. family, man. Look after yourself. Look after yourself. I'm Thank you very much. Thank you, India. I pray for India, man. I hope things resolve there quickly, man, because it's just terrible. Thank you. But yeah, look after yourselves and love to everybody. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining. And uh, wait till I get the next TV. I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> take care. Take care, take care. Bye.
Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. And you know what? Leave a comment and share it if you can. And of course, you're subscribing, right? To youtube.com forward slash browncarguy. Of course, also to browncarguy.com. And follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even on TikTok. Just search for my hashtag. It is hashtag browncarguy. And you know what? If you enjoy my content, you can sponsor it as well. And you can do that at patreon.com forward slash browncarguy. And your name will appear like these gentlemen coming up here on my content at the end of the video in my written text and on some of my Instagram posts and that's a reach of what 350,000 views in total on my YouTube channel 2,000 plus subscribers nearly 8,000 followers on Instagram so you know what if you have something to promote you're most welcome to do that and you can do that from as little as two pounds or two dollars a month the price of buying me a coffee you do that right <laughs> and you can join this incredible lineup coming up on the screen which of course includes Muhammad Humaid over in uh, UAE Partha Srinivasan in India Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK Isaac Boshad over in America, Reza Adil here in the UK, also Mohammed Qasim here, Saraj Abbasi here, Mark Waddell in Canada, Zaka Kogliani uh, over in America, and a dear childhood school buddy of mine, Shahir Haki, also over in America. See your name coming up here? Uh, just head over to patreon.com forward slash brown car guy, and I'll see you all in the next video.